Hey everybody, going to do a sensory analysis on three different Piococcus strains that I tested out. Did a split batch of, uh, of DME wort and pitched uh, Piococcus from White Labs, White Yeast, and Inland Island. Let that go for about two or three days. Then I pitched uh, the same amount of uh, USO5 into each one. Let that ferment out. Uh, aged for about three months, which is a little longer than I wanted. Then I put uh, amalgamation in there. And that might have sat for another three to six months somewhere in there before I bottled it. Uh, these bottles now are, are uh, about a year old, a little over than that, so I'll link a video on uh, exactly what I did and what the experiment was there um, and uh, gonna go over the results. First some stats on the beers. Uh, the Inland Island ended up at 3.17 pH and it ended up at 7.9 bricks. The Y yeast ended up at 3.2 pH and 8 bricks. The White Labs ended up at 3.2 pH as well, and at 8.1 bricks. I'm going to do some sensory. I've got these cups uh, marked with, the, uh, with what they are. I don't know if you can see it here. Um, one thing I've noticed already is that the Inland Island one is, uh, is quite a bit more carbonated than the other two, and the Y yeast was basically uncarbonated completely. So here's the Inland Island. And let's uh, get a get a nose and a taste on this. So I get a lot of uh, dark fruits as, long, as well as like uh, apple and cider characters, but you also get uh, more like plum and raisin a little bit of that. Get like a dustiness, like a minerality or dustiness that might just be from the from the carbonation. Uh, maybe a slight bit of isovaleric acid, stinky cheese. And I'm mostly kind of getting like this dark, uh, well, pineapple. Pineapple with a little bit of raisin and plum, along with uh, some of your green fruits like apple. But uh, yeah, that dustiness is definitely in there as well. The acidity is pretty, even though it's a 3.2 uh, pH, it doesn't t taste that acidic. Um, it tastes kind of, a, kind of a light, moderate light tartness. Uh, the flavor definitely follows the nose. So you get um, a lot of pineapple, you get a little bit of a goaty uh, funk in there, just a little bit. Um, also picking up on, it's kind of a aftertaste of... Uh, of chalkiness. I wouldn't say the flavor is is incredibly uh, complex. I do like the acidity level, uh, like what the Brett did there. Uh, it's hard to say what exactly maybe the Pediococcus did. Um, I'm not getting it as wine-like as as it was before. Uh, I added the Britannomyces, so the Britannomyces I think kind of you know took over a little bit. Um, but there's definitely the uh, the acidity to, to back it up. Pretty thin body. Uh, this was just uh, dry malt extract and nothing else, no hops or anything. Hmm. So that's interesting. Let's move on. Go on to the uh, Y yeast. Now this is the second bottle that I've opened of the Y yeast and both of them are uncarbonated. And that I don't know why. The only thing I can think of is that the Britannomyces and the Y yeast batch died for some reason. I kept them all in the same type of fermenter, in the same area, at the same temperature, same time. Um, I definitely didn't forget to to uh, add sugar to them because uh, I bottled them all at the same time. Uh, but the Y yeast uh, didn't carbonate for some reason. I did not add any yeast at bottling time. So I'm getting that same, uh, and this one's kind of kind of come through as a smoky character. Um, in the other one, it was like a dusty character, but I think it's kind of the same thing. Maybe without the carbonation, just comes off a little differently. Uh, the fruits are definitely kind of like a pineapple, but it's real, real light. Uh, probably again because it's not carbonated. Definitely getting some ethyl acetate in there, but low levels, um, real pineapple. 
kind of a character. Um, maybe a little bit of a, like a honey sweetness. <clears throat> interesting this one kind of tastes uh, a little more complex especially on the fruit side of things definitely fruitier um, by that I mean more of like your stone fruits uh, your peach and pear apricot um, less of the of the raisiny um, darker fruit or, or maybe even pineapple aspect that the inland island had uh, the white yeast um, actually tastes tastes more complex on that fruity side um, maybe not as funky Perhaps. I'm not getting that goat character in this one. Which should be coming from Britannomyces. And that would be probably Caprolate. But uh, going between the two of them, uh, this one is definitely more, more intense on that pineapple character. Um, and this one is more more subdued, quite a bit more subdued and going more into the stone fruit category. It's really interesting that the PDO made that big of a difference. <clears throat> I'm kind of shocked at that actually. Um, so here's the white labs. This, the white labs carbonated just fine. Maybe a little more head retention on the white labs. The aroma is definitely weaker. You get kind of a weak pineapple with that chalk aspect to it, that minerality in there. But it kind of tastes like a, uh, or smells like um, kind of a weak, weak apple ester of some sort. Might be getting a little, little more pineapple now. Definitely a weaker aroma overall. Now this one did have um, yeast contamination in the primary, so maybe the uh, the yeast that was in there uh, made a big difference in this particular beer. Made it turn out much different than the than the other two. That's one variable that uh, was out of my control. That uh, was a noticeable difference. You can check uh, the other video out to get more on that. Uh, this one definitely has a lot more of the wine character to it, more like a Chardonnay. In fact, I think I might get a little diacetyl, but it kind of comes across more like a like a nuttiness or something like that. I'd say the acidity is is kind of sharp, but it's less acidic than the Inland Island. Um, definitely more Chardonnay, wine-like grape, that kind of a that kind of a character. Uh, let me go. Also get like a um, get a plastic phenol on the aftertaste. Definitely a plastic um, ethyl phenol or uh, maybe ethyl glycol, something like that. Um, maybe kind of a like a watermelon aspect to it. Uh, it's kind of in between the other two. Um, definitely has more pineapple than the Y yeast uh, but it's more subdued and a little more uh, maybe a little more complex than, than the other two you get more of a uh, plastic uh, phenol aftertaste it could be uh, ethyl glycol or, or ethyl phenol something like that uh, some sort of uh, some sort of plastic phenol on the, on the aftertaste it's very slight not a lot of that This one is probably more drinkable than the other three, more subtly complex. Um, it's interesting that I think I like the White Labs one the best <laughs> out of all this. Um, maybe because there was uh, more, well, it could have been that yeast that was in the White Labs uh, Pediococcus um, package. Uh, there was definitely a, well, most likely a yeast contamination in there. Uh, so it, that yeast uh, fermented the work before the USO5 did. Uh, so maybe that uh, played a big difference there. Yeah, so to summarize, the Inland Island, really intense pineapple, I would say. I like that, um, 
I'd say fresh, fresh pineapple. Whereas the Y yeast, way more subdued, more on the uh, on the apple pear ester kind of level with uh, with a little bit of the pineapple as well. And the White Labs is a nice balance between the two. Also, kind of has a Chardonnay um, a nuttiness to it as well. Um, so, uh, the White Labs beer turned out the best. Um, it's shocking how much difference the Pediococcus made, especially in the Inland Island. It was like really, really intense uh, pineapple there. So, um, it would probably be a really good blending beer. So, that's it for the sensory analysis of three Pediococcus cultures from Inland Island, Y Yeast, and White Labs. I want to thank Inland Island for sending me the Pediococcus. Cheers, and thank you for watching.